Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Relax. <laughs> so before we talk about the future and all the future plans of, of hope for children, uh, let's go back a few years, 14 years closely, uh, and look how it all started. How did you guys decide to uh, establish hope for children here at the Work for Children was established in 2008. It was established while I was studying in the university. I found there was a massive gap on children's rights issues in Cyprus. So the, one of the examples I, want, I was wondering why there was no child help plan, even though we were in the EU member state. We were EU member state in 2008. We didn't have a child help plan. So I discussed with different international organizations like Council of Europe, UNICEF, and they told me if you create an entity, you, we, they would support me more. Early. So with my friends and uh, my professors, we created this organization in 2008 with two people. Now we employ full-time 115 full-time staff members. Uh, I had the chance to see the first stages and experience the first stages of Hope for Children um, as a volunteer at that time. So I was involved supporting uh, the initiation of different uh, programs and I have experienced how difficult it was at that time to establish this organization because Cyprus was also not very familiar with NGOs and what the NGOs can offer to the society. So we had to put a lot of effort to convince, uh, to get access to the system, to the government, and establish cooperations. So it's amazing to see how far we, we reached. Definitely, it's, a very, it's, a, it's an amazing journey you guys have achieved. And talking about achievements, uh, what do you believe are um, the biggest achievements so far? I'm sure there's so many from today onwards, but from all these 14 years ago. Uh, I would say three very important achievements, which was we managed to create a children's house uh, taking the Icelandic model for uh, handling of sexual abuse against children with, in a, a holistic approach. We have all our uh, the, the children's house is coordinated by us, staffed by the government. We have government representatives from the Ministry of Health, social welfare services, police, up to even the medical examiner. So it's a it's an all policy approach in the, in that house. And then we have two um, shelters for unaccompanied children in the Republic of Cyprus. The Cyprus has never ever given such kind of authority for any non-government organization to run and uh, they trust us. Now we run two uh, shelters for unaccompanied children and also the foster care system because we have protocol of agreement with uh, uh, welfare services of the Republic and we co we work together uh, to foster children and the families. So we have right uh, now almost 400 children in the foster care which we handle. Anira, what, what do you consider? Do you have something to add? Uh, and that even though every achievement is big for us because we see how it affects uh, children's lives, uh, I would add the, the fact that we have managed to build up a great team of professionals. Uh, we have built up an expertise in different fields related to uh, children's rights because uh, today in order to be able to support children you need to have uh, expertise, training and uh, special, uh, uh, special uh, uh, education in order to, to be able to have quality services. So for us the fact that we have a team, as Joseph said, more than 100 uh, professionals uh, providing quality services for free to children, all children for free. Uh, this is a great achievement. And if I can add one more uh, in relation to the children's house that Joseph uh, 
referred earlier, uh, the fact that children, instead of testifying in court at the moment in Cyprus, they can come at our service, uh, at our premises, at the children's house, connect through teleconferencing and testify in court, avoiding this traumatizing procedure of being present in the court. And this took a lot of effort, law amendments, uh, and to convince judges to accept uh, this kind of arrangement in order to uh, support children in this way. So this, I would say, is also an important achievement for me. Well done, well done. And, and, and what do you envision for the future? How can we help Hope for Children uh, CRC Policy Center fulfill this future path? Uh, where do you begin and where do you end? <laughs> I'm sure there's so many things that you would like to do. Never ends, yes, there are always needs. Uh, but for us, uh, a goal is to be able to uh, have uh, in the, the organization to be financially independent, to ensure its sustainability, long term sustainability, uh, so that we are able to address all these needs that are uh, increasing in relation to children. We see Nowadays, for example, with the pandemic, with the uh, technology, uh, we have all this increase in the violence against children uh, through the internet globally. We want to be in a position to design programs and tools uh, to be able to respond to children's needs. And, and one last question, Joseph. What motivates you to keep growing and expanding? Your activations. How for children's activations? So, our organization's impact on our uh, children uh, for all these years, past uh, 13 years, uh, we have touched more than 30,000 children's lives. And this, uh, we see the, 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 their life has been changed through the impact or the services that organizations pro organization provide. So, this makes us to work hard. Thank you very much both for everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you.